Now you're recording. <laughs> Alright, so we'll okay. cut that before we do no, that. We'll, we'll, uh, okay. we'll cut that uh, <laughs> the delay time, that four minutes or whatever. We'll cut that. We'll just cut it down. And, okay. 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 Yeah. Well, okay. That was a practice session. No, that's right. I knew that. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. We are running now. You are running now. Okay. All right. Just push the red button when you're done. Okay. Okay, good. Action. Okay. <laughs> Get it right this time. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, good afternoon to you. How you doing? All right. All right, good. Um, so, uh, we're here today to uh, go over our sixth and seventh grade math scores. Um, uh, uh, we're looking at our Georgia Milestone data, and uh, we, we're looking at how our school has scored in relation to the RESA, the system, and the state. Uh, if you look at our sixth grade scores, you'll notice that. Um, uh, we had 25% uh, proficiency um, for 6th grade mathematics and 29% proficiency in 7th grade mathematics. Uh, I do also want to call your attention down to the chart in the bottom left corner of the page. Um, those are uh, the percentage of uh, students who scored by achievement level. Our, our achievement levels are beginning learner, level 1 is beginning learner, level 2 is developing learner, level three, proficient learner, and uh, level four is distinguished learner. Um, we want to start looking at our scores and how, how we're in a remediate learning category. Uh, category two was monitor, monitor learning, and category three was accelerate learning. Um, so we're going to look at our school scores first, and then, uh, like I said, we'll go look uh, in relation to the system of recent state. And uh, we're going to take about four or five minutes. I want you to tell me, I, I want you to look at your data first. Mm -hmm. And then you'll get in groups. Uh, we'll split up the groups. Uh, say you two will take sixth grade. Yeah, sixth grade school. is fine. And, and you take seventh grade. And then, uh, so we'll take four or five minutes. All right. Then I'll let you discuss it in the past. And then we'll join the group. Okay? All right? Okay. All right. We have a timer. I'll be the time keeper. All right, good. Thank you. So just set us about four or five minutes. Four All minutes or five? Two. Two? Two. Two minutes, all right. I may need a little oh, bit more time at the end because I'm not real familiar with this, so I might need a little more time. Good, Good. thank you, all right. <laughs> Set for four minutes. Mm -hmm. Four minutes. Hey, this is a production, man. You know what I'm saying? Thought we had a set of norms. We're down now to about three minutes. Um, everybody might want to try to wrap it up. We have one more minute left. Yeah, you know, I don't know. Like you're confusing me now. <laughs> you got four minutes or two or what? No, we have four minutes, but you know, three minutes has passed. Yeah, yeah. time left. Yeah, right. 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 How it's explained mm -hmm. with learners who are really in need of, of remediating the mm -hmm. content again. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's probably our cue because it is one minute. So one minute. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and uh, if, if I can just monitor you more, um, we'll be ready when the timekeepers. Okay. Timekeeping I got you. We are ready. We're ready. Okay. Good. Now I'm going to invite you to go ahead and uh, uh, pair up. Right. Pair up and discuss your findings. Okay. 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 I got my mom's kind of racist, so I was looking over in seventh grade. 
conversation back to the group. Uh, sixth grade, um, what, what did you observe? What did you notice about your dad? Well, I noticed, I was explaining with my partner that um, across the board, not just in our school, that the highest number of students scored in level one. That's the heaviest area, and they're mainly lumped into level one. Okay. Um, and the lowest is Level three. Tell, uh, okay, uh, tell us where you get, so you're looking at the back in the domain. Yes, at the domain. Okay. In every domain, level one, that's where our heaviest number of students are. Okay, all right, good. Which is the remediate um, learning level. Okay. And then in level three, which is the highest level, and again across the board, thus the lowest scoring for all students. Okay, I see. I across see. the state. So, um, so we've noticed that most of our students are, are scoring in level one, right. and the least amount of our students are scoring in level three. That's good. Exactly. Um, uh, can we think of any reasons for that? Um, I don't think coming from, they're sixth grade, so they're coming from elementary, so the different scene, the mm -hmm. you know, the setup of the classes are different. Okay. They're now the youngest of the group. That could be, you know, that could play a part in it. Okay. Good. Um, Good. So the transition from elementary yeah. to middle might be a cause of yeah. the trip. That's good, okay? Seventh grade. We, have, we also, uh, oh, um, no, I have to, to um, we also might want to look at the, uh, the teachers who's teaching these classes because you know they, they all the real young teachers that just came in. Okay. So they mm -hmm. might not be that experienced, and that might have something to do with it as well, you think okay. so? Okay, all right. Well, that could I, possibly be. Miss Johnson in particular, she's a real mess. Um, you know, not like a real so mess, but... To school, you know. <laughs> yeah. Either, either, I, I don't... Sometimes new teachers coming out, they really know their content. They're just lacking in classroom management. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, maybe that's what they, it is. They're they lacking in classroom management, which can be okay. skews the scores. And, and Again, you got to be so in classroom management. We might need to provide some support for yeah. Um, yeah. for our new teachers' classroom management. Okay, Good. that makes okay. sense. Uh, any other trends? Any other things that you know? I was explaining as well that across the board that no one scored over 50% proficient okay, no one within scored. the state school anywhere. Okay, and good. that was just eye raising for me. How do you think we scored in relation to uh, the state or the district? I, I was just going to bring that up because I'm looking at it as a school. We only have 25%, so we, we're scoring low mm -hmm. in all of those areas. The system's 32, recess 38. And the state is 36 and we're at 25. Okay, so is that good or bad? What do you think? 
I don't think it's too good. It shows that, you know, our proficiency levels is pretty low. So 25, we were about 9 points, 10, 11 points below the district? Okay, good. Um, now, being that we want to get students to proficiency, uh, if you look at the chart in the bottom left corner, uh, we have four levels. But basically, we need our students scoring that proficiency or higher. And given the case that we need our, our students scoring that proficiency or higher, what is this saying about our school in relation to the district and the state? And the reason? Got some work to do. Got some work to do? All right. Uh, so if we look at that, sure will. We got six kids, six six percent of our kids scored at distinguished, and nineteen scored at proficient. So, um, well, it'll probably be worth it. So, basically, if we look in our domain, um, what do you think we need to start in terms of sixth grade? I looked at that and I saw that number system. Just learning how to count in the order that the numbers go in, because it's a seventy-two percent from our school that do not know the number system and you're okay. in a hard time if you don't know where one, two, three goes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, uh, you said across the board, across the board. And then expressions, mm -hmm. equations, 73, yeah. statistics, mm -hmm. 73. So what do you think we'll get the biggest bang for our buck? What, what's the place that we need to attack first? What do you think? I think if we're looking at the school, I think we ought to look at the, the lower numbers, um, like the 16, the 12, things. Okay. All right. So, so number system. Then we can we can agree that that will be a place of that we need to focus on, right? So we probably need to just drill down and see what it is that they're missing, because it could be a basic concept that's causing them not to function, and all the other concepts. So. Okay. Good. Good. And it's statistics and probability. If there's an eight under uh, three, mm -hmm. so that that might be an area that we want to look. Because if you look across the board, that is the lowest number. Okay, all right, good enough. Now, I notice, uh, you know, ratios and proportions. We had uh, quite a few uh, kids scoring in level two, uh, you know, relative to the other content areas, content domains. Um, you know, what do you think about that? I noted that, that we're three, three from different from the state, mm -hmm. and uh, that that's, we're close, and I, like, our colleague here, we go to the low hanging fruit first. So that's something we can success that we just need to really touch on or review on that mm -hmm. way we can move on and attack one of the bigger problems. Okay. okay. Right. The, um, the other thing, just in listening, but um, it could be our con um, the standards as well. If the test and even just as the state, we're not that we're far away, what is the, you know, the missing link? Like, okay, so we need to look at standards. But then our curriculum, what are we not teaching or how we're teaching to meet the test. Okay, all right. Well, in that category, our performance is consistent with the, st it, with the state. I mean, you know, I don't think we're that far off. Uh, the state from the test, like as your curriculum that you're teaching to mm -hmm. get to that point, like apparently there is a big gap. Um, so that would be a question we'd have to ask teachers as we come to a math meeting. Right? Exactly. So what are your standards? Looks like let's review, make sure you're touching on these, yeah. and how soon you're touching on these. Therefore, we can get the kids' information to them quicker. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. How many times you hear, well, it was on the test, but it's not even in our curriculum. So. Okay. All right, hey, let's turn the attention to seventh grade. Seventh grade, what do y'all think? What do y'all find? Thank you. Uh, I think one of the celebration things, we always talk about the negative. One of the celebration things we want to talk about is like on the eighth grade, somewhere between the sixth grade and seventh grade, they learned the numerous system mm -hmm. because we tied with the state on that, on that particular one in, in, in uh, Distinguished. Well, I think Ms. So, Jackson is, and Ms. Jackson and uh, Mr. Crumber, they, they retired. They did. They that's brought right. us some new teachers. Okay. Right. And, and they kind of got it, got it done. Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. So, uh, anybody have any questions about the center pattern? Mm -hmm. The glaring, I guess, the, the elephant in the room nobody wants to talk about, though, is stats. Okay. It's a bad number. And I don't know if kids just now getting numeracy, if stats is one step further than what they actually wanted to do. We got a long-term survey. Oh, do we? Yeah, long-term survey. Mm -hmm. 
we'll have to fix that because that didn't apply for accountability. You know, it's hard to find somebody in the middle of the year. It is. Everybody's under contract or whatnot, but we have a long time, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now that we've talked about this, um, I'd like for you to uh, go ahead and uh, let's identify, let, let's uh, chart down what are our strengths, what are our weaknesses. Uh, let's talk about what are the gaps that we've observed. Um, okay. I know as a seventh grade math teacher, for us, it's what the sixth grade teachers aren't doing sometimes. Mm -hmm. you know, we got to find out what's going on there and maybe talk to the department head. But like discussed before, everybody can point fingers uh, pointing down. Mm -hmm. and so to avoid that kind of thing, we got to figure out as a math department, as a school as a whole, what we're all teaching. I think some kind of way when we make our schedules, um, we need to give our math teachers the same plan period as possible. Okay. That That's way a good we can collab. Good idea. That way we can collab and uh, what's working for you may not be working for me and sometimes we can cross teach. Okay. All right. Um, uh, what are areas of our greatest need or improvement? So we, we talked about uh, the number system, correct? Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Good. I think we also need to look at um, our math support program. Mm -hmm. You know, um, is it effective? What are some things that maybe we need to add to it, take out? Maybe we need to put some students in, you know? Because looking at the sixth grade, um, the 25% is just, just below everybody. So we got to figure out what's the problem then. Okay, all right, good. Um, so next steps then. Um, we talked about the transition. We talked about having support for our new teachers, right? Because I think identifying kids. Uh, like the doc has said, identifying kids so we can get them in mass support, find out what the holes are mm -hmm. that they're missing, and then we can get them out. Okay, excellent. And, and then also right. speak with those sixth grade teachers to find out if that transition is an issue. And right. if it is, what can we do to support those students coming in? Good, good. Okay. All right. Okay, so basically, um, just just in summary, and I don't need some help with this. All right, we got you. All right. Anybody want anybody care to summarize this? <laughs> so part part of the thing we, we need to really we need to really have our teachers collab. Okay. okay. Collab right. twice a week. Uh, all our math teachers, and that's why it's important to see if we can get everybody in the same planning period in the math department. Okay. And see if we can collab and throw some ideas out. What's working for this teacher may not be working for other teachers, and then we could implement some cross teaching in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, that's one idea. And we can do that by using some data, you know, get some data from these math classes, and then we can possibly find out where's the weaker link set. I mean, we can focus more on that class or that teacher or those students, and hopefully that'll help us out. What do you think? I, I want to do that yeah. when we get to social studies too, a little bit. Okay. okay. We'll, we'll, we'll get to them in a little bit. Okay. Uh, while we're on this, let me. Uh, talk to you all about this. If you look at uh, percentage of students by achievement level, mm -hmm. um, for sixth grade, 41% are developing learning. And for seventh grade, there's 38% in developing learning. What um, category that was? Um, in developing learner for our school, if you take a look at this category, okay. this first category, uh, um, okay. you know we want to move our students to proficiency. Okay. So we have uh, at seventh grade, thirty-eight percent of our students in the developing learning category, um, and in sixth grade we have forty-one percent. So they're not far away from proficiency. You know, maybe we, we can think of some strategies to kind of move those kids okay. to that proficiency. Those are the kids I think we need to target. What do y'all think? I like that. We just got to ask the teachers. What, not the bad kids all the time. Just the ones that we got to find out which ones they are because. Mr. Smith, he always wants to give us, you know, John been in there about five, five times, and he opens up the ISS door for the teacher, you know, so he, right. he gives us problems with that. Okay, all right. Well, hey, we need to identify problem, uh, problems. Um, do they have any common assessments in place? That is, that is a good question. That is a good question. So that way you can, as a grade level, you know, assess and find out where those students are struggling to go ahead and of those points of support. Okay. Another thing I was thinking about too, you know, we got John that, that opens up ISS. What about we bring, because probably um, the reason why he cuts up so much is because he don't know math, because he always getting put out of math class. So mm -hmm. maybe we can get a math support 
teacher or somebody who can get in there when he does go to ISS, give him that additional uh, math support, and maybe that one-on-one -on -one can help him out. Okay. All right. So I've heard some good ideas. These are so these are the ideas we can kind of commit to and come to consensus on. Mm -hmm. All right, good. Well, I want to say uh, thank you. You guys rock. You guys right. rock as a uh, PLC team and um, as a data team. And this is Jeremy Sonny. All righty. Yeah, I want me to touch that yeah, again or not. Red. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to Hollywood. <laughs>